James Mancy, thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Um, Portland's Park's been in your family for a long time, I think since around 1979, from what I gather. Um, I'm really interested what your own first memories of the park are, or Portland's in general. Wow, that's a tough one. Um, what are my first memories? I suppose um, I remember coming up to the park and, and being in the gardens. Um, we've got sort of tunnels in the gardens uh, where the, the rockery, where the house used to be. Um, and there's there's tunnels. There. I remember playing in those. Um, and then you can look up the grills at the, the above as well. And some of the birds and animals as well. So we used to have, well, we still do have birds and animals, but we used to, uh, that's what we were predominantly to begin with, uh, gardens with, with, with birds and uh, and a few other bits and bobs. And I remember Penny the donkey was a, was a was something we used to come and say, let's Penny every day almost. Um, so I suppose they're the first memories, but yeah, it, it's, um, it, it's just, yeah, been in the family for a very long time and it, it's just normal for, for, for me, I suppose, in, in a way um never known anything different um that's what i think that's, that's what i always say to people um you know it's just yeah, yeah it's just what we do <laughs> so i get you're one of sort of three children i guess that grew up um in this environment it's pretty pretty cool really the proper family business i guess um which there isn't too much about with that these days certainly on that on the scale that you guys do it anyway do you think those family values and the work ethic have kind of come through directly to the park itself and what you do at Portland's and what you're trying to achieve at Portland's? I hope so. Um, I think that's something we strive for. The family values is, is very much, you know, yes, Portland's is a family business, but we, we we always say that the family does isn't just the sort of the close family. We have a lot of people here who've worked for us for a very long time. Um, and, you know, it's, it's sort of, we, we like to look after our team here and as much as possible. And um, I think that then, you know, create a nice environment for people to work in and that that then filters down through to the, the guest experience if, if you're if you're, your team are happy to be here then, then the guests will be happy to be here as well um so yeah it is, it's important for us those family values you know where it makes us different um some people like it some people don't it's not for everyone um but you know it, it creates a really nice work environment sometimes yes we have uh some disagreements uh and some conversations which can be quite uh, you can have more slightly more blunt conversations with family, can't you? Yeah, sure. Um, which has its, has its pros and cons too. But no, it's it's uh, it's something we strive for that that family value when you're out in park and that attention to detail and and the product we offer. I hope it comes through. That that's that we do we do sort of try to to make sure we keep those values. I would say, I mean, one big take home I have. This is just a bit of a side actually, but of all the places I've been, I've never come across a cleaner theme park. Um, okay. <laughs> it's phenomenal. It's like every time I've, I've only been, I think I've been twice, but it is always, and other people say this, that it is just immaculate. Um, mm. And to me, that is credit to the staff and whoever's training them and, and, and it is. You know, well, we... whatever's going on behind the scenes on, in that department, to me, it's flawless. Yeah. Mm. Our, um, yeah, I mean, we, we do work hard on our, on our cleanliness and the presentation of the park. It's a really important part of, of what we do. You know, the park needs to be looking at at its best for every single day of the year people visit at different times of the year it shouldn't just look good on the opening day it needs to look good on every day of the season you know you still pay the same ticket price to come in you should get the same experience and presentation um we don't uh we it's a huge site we we can't be everywhere as a family as i said it goes back again to the team you know we have some absolutely phenomenal people here um and everyone literally everyone does their part to to keep those standards up you know we we couldn't possibly do it we don't we don't do it all ourselves yeah, there's sure. some really really good people who uh who who do a fantastic job for us obviously um been delayed because of coronavirus but when did your planning first begin for tornado spring Probably uh, 2017, um, late 2016. We opened Lost Kingdom in 2016. Uh, and then we're like, right, okay, what's next? So we, we quickly moved on to this and then we developed the, the plans. Uh, we worked for the first time with Leisure Expert Group on this area, on Tornado Springs. Uh, really, they, they produced some beautiful, uh, beautiful concepts, beautiful plans for us to, to work from. You know, we worked very closely with them. Mm. And, you know, I think that what, 
what we envisage together, um, I think we've managed to, to really realise really well, you know, so um, back in 2017, we started talking to them and, and yeah, the project just grew from there. It's one of the first products, not just me saying this, one of the first projects I've seen where it looks better in real life than the conceptual drawings. Usually, <laughs> usually there'll be a couple of things you're like, oh, that isn't there or that doesn't quite look like that. But um, Tornado Springs looks better than the concepts in my opinion. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, LEG would say about that, but I'll take that <laughs> <but> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And it seems to have opened the park up a bit to sort of, you know, what I would call roller coaster enthusiasts and theme park geeks that might not necessarily have visited Portland's before. You must be delighted about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're, we're really pleased to, to provide a fantastic day out to everyone, anyone, really, you know, and if people can come and, and I think Storm Chaser is a, a really good coaster, which I think has caught quite a few people out. Yes, it's a family coaster and that, you know, make no secret of that. You know, you can get a one metre child, four year old on, on that, which is a very small child, but that it is a really, really good roller coaster um that that bottom helix especially you know it, it the forces on it and everything i think people have been surprised by just how good it is um i think and similar with the cyclonator too i think some people have been caught out by that slightly i found a film chase was a lot more intense than i was expecting especially what you're saying about that last helix especially from the, the last um last car if you like and mm. Cyclonator I just love I love those sort of rides anyway I love Maelstrom at Drayton Manor and Cyclonator yes, very good ride. me Cyclonator is probably now the best flat ride in the country so uh, I can't say that but you can so uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. something really cool about riding a new ride like that you can just literally uh, feel the fresh the freshness of that ride the first time we went on it was great yeah absolutely no so and we have got it's not just about Tornado Springs you know we, we, we've got quite a few roller coasters in her mm-hmm. um and we're putting a new one in next year as well yes it's only a small zero coaster for the 90 centimeter high child but um that's another roller coaster what um do you like most about the new area what do i like most the atmosphere um i think very very easy to answer i think the atmosphere we've created in that area and the immersiveness mm. the rides are brilliant uh, playgrounds are excellent the food's excellent but you can just sit there and enjoy the atmosphere and you, you haven't got to be partaking in, in the rides to to really be enjoying the air i think the, the whole atmosphere and the feel and the um the escapism that is provided in in, in the area is better than we could have hoped i think once you get with that atmosphere then you couple everything else in with that uh, it becomes a really enjoyable um experienced people how um important does Peppa pig continue to be for the park and do you think theme parks need intellectual properties in the modern era to be truly successful tricky question that isn't it um so Pe- first of all Peppa pig yeah extremely important to us we we value hugely our partnership with with e1 hasbro um for, for the pepper brand you know 2011 pepper pig world opened so it's 2021 now uh 10 years of pepper we've, we've yeah. had it here at the park you know um we're, we're very passionate and we care greatly about the pepper brand um it is yeah it's no secret it transformed what Portons Park was for us um, and for other people and it's allowed us to, to reinvest in the park and other areas. Um, so of course it continues to be very important for us. It's, it's the best preschool area of any theme park in the UK. Um, I will go on record and say that after I've said it before, I'll say it again. Um, you know, it is, it's a, it's a fantastic area and it, it's almost, you know, people, it's a rite of passage for, for young children into Peppa, Peppa Pig. So yeah, it's it's an extremely important part of what we do. Um, we love Pepper, and you know we 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 will continue to look after the area and promote it and and do everything we need to do to keep it that that the best preschool area in the UK. Um, do theme parks need IP to be successful? I don't know. I think it depends on on the park very much, um, and you're, there's so many different factors. I don't think theme parks do need an IP to be successful. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if, if you've, there's so many great parks out there that don't have an IP. If you're in different locations, different scenarios, you've already built your brand up. You don't need necessarily need that IP to, to generate success. Success comes in many different forms. It's not just visitor numbers, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, which people get caught up on. So no, I don't think they do in the modern era. 
of course it helps it does help the right ip always helps but it's very rare you you that you do get that mm-hmm. right ip um sometimes it, it can be a hindrance if you get the wrong ip so it, it there's a risk always with working with an ip because of the longevity side but yeah um so sometimes developing your your own brand um as well as instead of um is just as important in a way i think that's something that's brilliant about um the lost kingdom area of the park you could easily it could easily be assumed that that's very much very similar to, to a famous dinosaur brand or two but actually dinosaurs are just cool. i don't know what you mean about that but <laughs> and it has it has its own it has its own look and feel, in my opinion, Lost Kingdom. And there's a couple of brilliant rides in there as well to back it up, which is cool. Um, so what is next for Portland's Park? Are you looking at some larger, I say larger rides like Storm Chaser and Cyclone? They're still family rides, I appreciate, but they're perhaps yeah. not, not as young as some of the Pepper Pig stuff. Or will you now skew things back and, and put in a couple of rides for a younger audience again? Well, I'm not, uh, not going to give you any spoilers, so sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> we, of course, we're opening next year, we're opening, I've mentioned already, Farm Yard Flyer. Um, in Tornado Springs, which will really complete that area off. So another roller coaster for the park, um, very much for that that very small child. Um, our market is families. We are very much about families, families with young children, but families come in only different guises. We will continue to invest in the park. Um, we want to move across and there's two sides to the park. The other side where the Cobra and Lost Kingdom are, um, we want to take a, take a look at that um and see what we can do over there to to uh, revamp and, and i think the atmosphere i touched on earlier we want to create a bit more atmosphere over there yeah. um and yeah we'll look at that i'm not going to say exactly what we're right. doing I, I, i'm going to be honest we're <laughs> not exactly sure ourselves right now Fine. um but we're, we're looking closely at it and there's a lot of other factors as well at the moment at play um <laughs> we're in the middle of a pandemic still yeah um and, you know, yes, we're, we're still having to operate at capacity. Um, demand is good this year, but will demand be good next year when people can travel abroad? Will people then start looking at, hopefully people can travel abroad? There's lots of different factors at play. Will people want something different? I think we, we any business at the moment, is, it has to be a bit sensible and uh, just take stock and see where, where we are, what what is the new what is going to be the new world sure. um so yeah we have we have some brilliant uh, ideas um uh, uh, but from a business point of view we're just waiting to see as soon as we know what we're going to do we'll let everyone else know yeah, be exciting exciting i'd love to know um we think there's enough space for an rmc just behind cobra by the way but i'll let you uh, good to know i'll note that one down um last question i guess just tell me why should people come and visit portland's park why should people visit portland's park well, uh, there is a reason we keep getting voted the, the best theme park in the uk on TripAdvisor. Um, one of the best theme parks in, in the world in, in Europe on TripAdvisor as well. Um, we're passionate about what we do. We provide a world-class family experience for families. Uh, we care about our guests. Um, we have a beautiful new era in Tornado Springs as well as Lost Kingdom, the rest of Portons Park and of course Peppa Pig World. You know, just come and have a day out. Just get, please, you know, you don't need to go to some other named theme parks to have a good day out at a theme park in the UK. Um, you know, if you've never had the confidence to visit Portland's Park before because you think maybe it's it's a small kids park, uh, I would challenge you to uh, see if you don't have a good day out here. Uh, there, you know, we, we provide a quality product um, with some phenomenal ride experiences and... I'm confident that, that anyone can have a good day out here. Totally agree. That's totally been my experience as well. Although I'm yet to bring my daughter. It's terrible. I've been, oh, I've been, well. I've been there twice <laughs> without my eight-year-old daughter. So we will, we will be making a trip in the near future. Eight-year-old, so, eight year perfect age. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. She'll love it there. She'll love it. You'll have a brilliant day out. Cool. James, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. No problem. No problem. Cheers, Adam. Uh-